Today's a follow-up from the tutorial I did for the shockwave, quick old shockwave, go check it out in the card annotation in the top right or in the description. Today we're going to be doing the meshing of this, uh, it's going to be nice and quick. Uh, and then we're going to do some lighting as well, uh, I need to get my Houdini shelf up, I mean my, <laughs> my redshift shelf, there we go, yeah that's good. Alright, so let's just jump into it. Um, I'm going to be importing a cache version of the file. Uh, yours doesn't have to be coloured, you know, it doesn't matter. I was just doing a, another test that I might have on the screen, but I, I never rendered a, like a, the comp version of it. So let's just get started. I might just put this to a more neutral colour because it's a bit it's a bit blinding in it. There we go. Actually, I kind of liked it because you could tell the different parts. So um, first off, we're going to be doing VDB to, to uh, or VDB from uh, particles. Yeah. So just turn that on and we'll get something. Might not be nice, but we'll get something. Right, so as you can see, that took ages. I, th I had to cancel it. I don't know if I actually finished simming. But the first thing you want to do is turn down minimum radius to zero. And then turn down the point radius scale uh, to like point 0.1 or something. And it will sim a lot quicker. Maybe even smaller than that. Maybe even smaller. So um, yeah, we can't see much, but obviously we've got a really high voxel rate right now. Uh, the final, the final um, voxel size I used was 0 0.005, but we're going to do 0 0.05 here, just so uh, my computer doesn't die. Uh, maybe we will switch it up before we export it to Redshift, but for the minute let's just stick to that. And then we're going to be bringing down a rebuild. Where is it? A reshape, sorry. Reshape. Yeah, there we go. So turn it on and we're going to be dilating it. So we're going to expand it a little bit before we smooth it, which is our next node. So smooth SDF. And I put this pretty low actually. I had this on uh, one iteration and left it on mean value because I want to keep a lot of the detail because our final shader was actually a, a subsurface material. So you won't see the, you know, the sharp edges as, as, as much as you would if you had a, a solid material. And then we're going to be bringing down another uh, reshape. Actually, I might just copy that. Um, and this time I'm going to be eroding it. So um, basically it does the opposite of, of dilate. And then we're going to be conversing it. So convert VDB. So um, yeah, it's not looking too good at the moment. But as I said, you know, that wasn't the final... Um, voxel size, so if I put it on 0 0.005 it'll take a while to sim, but you know, eventually we'll get something. That was actually done in under 10 seconds, that was, that was really fast. So that is the final the final mesh quality that I had. And since the camera was quite far away it didn't really matter anyway. Right, so now it's time for the shading. Um, so I'm gonna go and first off create a camera. Uh, I should not do that. And then I'm going to change this to be above it. So that's minus 90 and then 0, 0. And we've got it nice and centered. Um, and then I'm also going to throw down a camera parameter, which will add this tab here. Um, and then we can go and, you know, mess around with the photographic exposure settings. So um, uh, I'm also going to need a redshift node itself, so just click redshift. Uh, I don't need the IPR because uh, I don't use the IPR. These settings were super simple, so I might as well just set them up now. I had no DOF on it, so I literally just used like the default um, anti-aliasing settings. Uh, I didn't use any global illumination. I didn't change any of the subsurface settings, even though I had subsurface on it. The only thing I did change was when I export it, I export as PNG and uh, Gamma. I changed to automatic because uh, 2.2 is like the the proper Gamma for, for PNG. Basically, if you export it on uh, no Gamma, it's going to it's gonna look way darker than it does in your, your render view, which isn't, isn't great. So um, now we're going to create a material for this. 
actually wait no let's let's set up some lighting first so um uh, I'll bring up the the render view uh, if you guys wanted like an in-depth thing on on the render settings in redshift um you can find a lot of tutorial there's like a a fully fledged like hour long thing done in Maya of course but like it works uh, the same in any other version um, or any other plugin version at least so uh, now we've got loaded I'm gonna do fit to window scale up so we can see it nice and big and just to save a bit of time I'm gonna render region the area that we're looking at in case we want to use progressive rendering or whatever for a little bit um, but I'm going to keep it on bucket rendering because uh, I'm going to be using a subsurface material and that, that only works in, in bucket mode. Um, right, so now I'm going to go and drop down a light, so we go RS Dome Light. And then that's going to add a bit of shading to this. Looking nice, looking a bit more interesting now. Uh, and what I do is I'll go in the back plate and turn on enable so basically I'm just looking at it on a black background and then I'm going to go and enable alpha channel as well um, actually when when I did bring this into After Effects I disabled the alpha because the, the subsurface on alpha looks so weak I had to keep duplicating it over and over again so I didn't even use alpha so you could turn that off if you want but it's just nice to have the option you know if you're just rendering a sim on black you know you might as well bring alpha with it um, to have the option and now we're going to be doing the material, which was um, which was pretty simple actually. Like I was just messing around with presets and stuff. So um, go into the mat section here and bring down an RS build material, and then we can call this uh, mesh material, something like that. And then bring down an RS mat because you need to connect that to your surface. I did blend this uh, another material, but um, I. I like uh, I kind of went through a bunch of different materials and I ended up just with <laughs> this simple material. Um, what looked super nice was um, milky coffee, but I haven't actually fully set up the lights um, yet. I, it was just a dome light, but um, I'm going to bring in one of the Grayskull Gorilla uh, materials. Um, so yeah, I use one of the, the Grayskull Gorilla uh, Pro Material thingies. Go and grab it if you haven't already. It's brilliant. Um, I'm using number 30, so um, you can see it's adding a lot of depth. It's really good for these sort of uh, renders where it's just like a simulation on screen or something because you want to, you kind of want to make it dramatic. Um, and obviously you could do that by ringing in lights, but you know we got to save a bit of time here. So uh, on gamma, I'm going to bring it up to two, and that's just going to make the lighting even more dramatic. And you can also play with the transform settings, so maybe put it on 90 and see how it looks. I think I just had it all on zero though, but um, you can make it even more dramatic by playing around with the rotation. And maybe when you're playing with the, the rotation you'd want to stick it on progressive rendering just so you get an update a bit quicker. And then you could even do, um, where is it, uh, undersampling. Uh, if you turn that up then it's going to it's gonna use like a lower starting sample rate basically. That's what I've gathered. <laughs> um, and we're going to want to drag our, our new material onto our mesh, so uh, mesh material. Right now we've not really set anything up inside of it, so it's just going to make it reflective uh, by default. You can see some of the reflections there. Right, um, and now I'm going to go and play with the material. So I used the preset Milky Coffee, right? I used a, I used a preset. But it looks it looks just so nice by default. And, um, you know, I originally really liked it uh, diffuse, but I ended up adding reflection to it because I thought it looked super nice, like, um, just a tiny bit though, if you go and put these all on one, then we're going to get a completely reflective material, but then I put down the uh, intensity super low, and I'm talking super low, 0 0.02, and I had the roughness on zero, so it's, it's creating all these super reflective tiny bits on it and also another thing for these simulations since you since if you add a UV it's just going to look a bit weird because it's like the texture is going to keep expanding you're better using something like a curvature uh, and this is what I was originally doing I was going to I was going to mix two different 
two different uh, milky coffees at different like levels of brightness, which actually looked kind of good, but ended up going up going with a simple one. Uh, and you can also turn up the samples, which will make it a lot more detailed in these little crevices here. So yeah, that's just some food for thought if you want to uh, mess around with this material a little more. Uh, and then also I, when I was messing around with the reflection, I, I tried turning up the roughness and I thought it actually looked pretty nice. Um, and I was like, oh well, I could add another reflection, um, which you can do in Redshift, you just need to go to Coating. And then you have another tab for, for reflection here. So again, I did 0.02 on the on the uh, weight, and then on the roughness I turned that way up to like 0.6, and then on the IOR I changed this to color, like I did before, and put it max. So we get you know the same sort of effect but just rough. So then it kind of adds like a little extra sheen to it, which is super nice, and you see it in the final render how it catches the light. So um, yeah, that's essentially the uh, the shader there. Final thing we're gonna do before we go and um, you know mess with you know maybe some of the samples and stuff because it's, it's a bit grainy at the moment. Um, I'm gonna go into the camera exposure, and then here you can play with like the the crush the crush black levels. It actually can create some pretty cool effects. Um, might be a little strong here. It's looking a little bit like Coca Cola in there. Um, also, a take off vignetting always, because you know you can add that afterwards. <laughs> Some of these settings are a little more difficult to to play with after you've rendered. So um, yeah, it's just adding a little bit more depth to it. Um, and you know, finally, since it's a bit grainy, we're going to go into our material and turn up probably the main culprit of of this uh, sampling nightmare, which is probably the subsurface. By default, it's on 16. If we change it to 128. We're going to get a lot smoother uh, looking material here. And you can see that some of our shadows are a bit, still a bit grainy. So let's go in here and figure out what uh, needs changed. If it's just the subsurface needing to go up, or if it's, you know, some reflection, or if it's a light that needs more samples. And it looks like it was just the. Uh, just the subsurface that needs to go up there, um, which is actually pretty good. Um, maybe let's go and play with with the the light samples and see if that makes any difference at all. Bring out some extra quality. Just throwing it way up to see what I get. But no, that's not really making a difference. So yeah, I'd say that's probably good to render. Um, you can add DOF, which is going to bring in another world of pain for, for sampling. But uh, that's essentially how I did the mesh and the uh, shader. And then in, in post, I just did you know a simple curves adjustment on it. Um, maybe some levels. Uh, I think that's about it, though. That's pretty much the render right there. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to you know leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.